My name is Dylan Gaslinary. This is another episode of the Sit Down Podcast. The song is about me struggling a lot um, last year with my mental health and depression. It's also about my life story behind it. The song's called um, Feel Lost. <laughs> Feeling lost in this terrain. So please tell me what to do with myself. Cause I don't understand. I'm drinking whiskey at the bars tonight. I'm trying real hard to hold myself together. Cause I don't wanna fight. Maybe just a shot And a pint or two Well I don't wanna lose myself It's all because of you Well I'm lost I'm feeling like I'm alone And I'm sick of feeling like there's a way Don't you feel it too? And I'm lost Please tell me what to do Do you understand Why I feel this way I can't look at myself anymore Don't say I'll be okay I'm drinking whiskey that bar tonight I'm trying real hard to hold myself together Cause I don't wanna fight And I'm sick feel like there's no way Cause I'm lost Feel like I don't belong And I'm sick of feeling like there's a way don't you feel it too? Well, I'm lost And I can no belong Well, and I'm sick of feeling like there's a way Don't you feel it too? Well, I'm lost Please tell me what to do Please tell me what to do with myself I don't understand I'm feeling lost Like I don't belong And I'm sick of feeling like there's a way Don't you feel it too And I'm lost don't wanna drink today And I'm sick of feeling like there's a way Can't you feel it too? And I'm alive Please tell me what to do Tell me what to do I'm feeling lost I'm feeling lost Hello, Hello, everybody at home and in-house here. 
We are back again at Le Capitan Restaurant in our hometown of Bellevue, Saskatchewan. They are our sponsor this week. Um, welcome to our town, Dylan. So good to see you again, buddy. How you been? I, I'm, I feel very welcomed. I f I'm doing so good right now. <laughs> I, I feel amazing. Like, I'm, I'm tired. I just finished another, like, shift at my new job. But, like, I feel amazing. Hell, yeah. So where's... Uh, Where's the new job? The last time we actually, I'll let the audience know. So Dylan was uh, one of our existing members of the house band that we were that we had at the Capitol Music Club in Saskatoon. Um, so I haven't seen Dylan in a solid week. <laughs> a whole week, one oh, whole week without me. Yeah, Come on, you could do without me for a bit longer. Oh man, I don't know about that. Well, um, so yeah, where's so you have a new job now? Yeah, um, I guess. Uh, one another one out of three. Um, so I started working at Urban Cellars uh, in Saskatoon. Another one I'm working out from home at with PAGC. My third one being my music career. So hell so yeah! But that your music is your first career, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah always okay. been. <laughs> Has hasn't changed for the past I don't know how long. <laughs> right. Good. Well, Good. there was uh, some of the members here who are sitting here in person were actually saying that they've been following your you since you were a child. So you, I, I, w I want to get into this. I want like an origin story of you. I don't know very much about you except for the fact that you've only got one hand and the mm. way you play guitar, dude, <laughs> is just immaculate. I can't get over how professional you are on the strings compared to people with two hands. And you know what I mean? He's a better guitar player than most two-handed guitar players. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's freaking amazing. So how old were you when you were, like, drawn into music? Um, well, I've always been, like, for all my life, I've known I've always been in music. I think the earliest time I've seen a me singing that I don't remember was, I think I was five years old. And it was with my, with my auntie. We were singing. Um, it, was like, it was a Christmas uh, festival thing. We were doing this, like, competition for a singing competition. I don't even know if we place. God knows. And um, that video is probably floating around on YouTube. You could find it somewhere. I don't know. Um, and there's a lot of videos of me floating around on YouTube that I am so embarrassed of for me when oh, I was a kid. Real? And Oh, there is. And <laughs> now that I'm saying that now, I know there's going to be people looking it up, and I'm yeah, terrified yeah. to see I'm that. I'm not going to cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, n don't. Just <laughs> help me get over this. But um, um, I think the earliest time I also started playing guitar was 2018 is when I started playing guitar, which... Five years ago now? I think it is. Yeah, five yeah. years ago. Yeah. So you learned to play the guitar in 2018? Uh, that's when I got my first left-handed guitar. And that's when I started learning left-handed. Because I had a right-handed guitar, which is where my stump was on the uh, fretboard. And okay. I thought it sounded good. I know it sounded awful. It, <laughs> it sounded like shit. It was, it was terrible. And, um, but... Uh, in 2018, uh, I won a singing competition, so I asked my mom to head down and buy me a left-handed guitar because I thought it'd be a lot easier for me to play with my, with my right hand on the fretboard playing the right. chords, and that's what I did, and I was playing guitar with my right hand on the fretboard, and I've been playing like that ever since, since 2018. Holy smokes. Sweet. I'm trying to... Do you remember when Dylan came on our radar? Yes. That was the first Chesterfest. First or second? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> um, first. First Chester Fest. I yeah. think it was 2021 is when I played Chester Fest last. Yeah, it was 2021. 2021? That was, yeah. Okay, because I, I saw you there and I was like, oh, crap, this guy's pretty good. And then I look again and it's like, oh, crap, he's really good <laughs> considering, you know. Yeah, <laughs> considering the one hand. But when you were playing there, you had some sort of contraption on your on your stump you don't have to call it contraption <laughs> well that's that's what it looks like it was duct tape and garbage <laughs> at, at being really kind to myself that was duct tape and a single guitar pick wedged right in there somewhere i don't even know how it was just trial and error over six hours and in, in my room locking myself in with six rolls of duct tape a little bit of cardboard and like a tray of just guitar picks and that's kind of why i <laughs> retired it sorry that's kind of why i retired it because i didn't want to spend because there's been many times where i've had to where i've gone through picks and i will go through like a single guitar pick for six months straight and i was doing that since 20 late 2018 that's when i made when i made it and like the one you guys saw me with um in chester fest and when i first came to the uh open mic that's the same pick and the same you're kidding um, 
Uh, well, I mean, I've changed out the pick, but it's been the same duct tape since 2018. The and same like, contraption. <laughs> yeah, it's been the same thing. And I've never retired it. And like, I've just retired it recently in May, and it's. I am scared to break it open and see what it looks like inside. I might as well just like call a hazmat team and like, cause I <laughs> I sweat a lot when I play. And you guys have seen me play. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. my god, it's insane. And I am just not sure what to do with that thing at that you point. Should, uh, <laughs> you should like put a patent on that thing or some kind of freaking sell it to disabilities or whatever. For, you know for what I mean? all the left-handed guitar players. Yeah. I should yeah, sponsored dude. by duct tape. You can just have a, a, a picture of your face on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, like brand it. Um, just I was the nub written on it. <laughs> yeah, just call it the nub. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. But uh, you don't play just guitar. No. I've... Uh, We've we've witnessed you play the drums too. Mm-hmm. I, I do play the drums, but this time with exclusively duct tape because that's what seems to hold up with me for more than two hours. Uh, duct tape is what I use for drum. I also play the piano, which I'm. I, I say play the piano, but I, I half-assed know my way around the piano. Right. Um, a bit on bass, just because it's also very similar to the guitar. Um, I think that'd be. I think that's. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> that's Holy about smokes. all the instruments oh. I know. That's a shit ton more than what I can do. <laughs> and I've got two hands. <laughs> I, re- I remember uh, at the Capitol, you were standing beside me and you, s- you had signed up on the sheet and uh, you had this roll of electrical tape around your arm. I was looking like, what are you going to do with that? And you had two drumsticks in your hand. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, you only have one hand. How is that going to work? And, he, and you pointed out the roll at me and was like are you serious <laughs> yep <laughs> he taped the shit out of one drumstick on his on his left left arm and then yeah yeah he went to town on that drum kit and was like holy shit oh, he's man. a better drummer than most drummers <laughs> <laughs> when um when when you're doing your sets when you when you have a gig that you're playing do you end up playing percussion on those as well like is there a moment during the set when you take a seat at the drum kit or are you pretty much just frontlining it um not preferably i don't prefer to sit at the drum kit but sometimes when i join other bands as a backing guitarist and the lead guitarist doesn't show up i had one gig i played in de i was for a grad party and during the party i was i was playing guitar and all that and then we were supposed to have two guitarists a uh, bassist and a drummer and like the guitarist didn't have his didn't have a guitar or an amp or a cable or nothing, so I bought all those for him. I provided all that for him, and I brought my amp and like I brought all the sound system and all that, and set it all up. Come to find out, bassist didn't show up, and uh, the guitarist was on his way, and guitarist never showed up. So we had to grab somebody from the street that knew how to play bass, picked him up. From the he street. played bass. Yeah, he, it was one of my buddies. Uh, it was my buddy's hometown, so he knew a lot of people who played. And like right. that that town, like. Um, there was like every backyard had a stage where people would play, and it was it was so wild to me because I'd go around and like see all these stages of just bands playing in different backyards, and it was crazy. Holy smokes! And it was it was so intriguing to me. But um, during that gig, I was playing guitar, and at some point, um, they wanted to do songs that I didn't know on guitar or drums, and so I was like, okay, just I asked the um, the people who were hosting us, like, do you guys have any tape at all? And I grabbed some tape, grabbed some sticks from the truck. And then I went to town on the drum kit for like almost the entire night. And I had cramps for two days because my legs were hurting. <laughs> and no I didn't d- drink enough water. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, you definitely give her shit when you're up there, man. I've seen it, you know. Hence the sweat. Do- dozens of times. <laughs> I was trying to, to remember the first time when you came onto my radar. It was actually, I can't recall her name, from Candle Lake. Is it Vel- Velma? Vel- yes. Yeah, yeah. Velma, is that the correct name? Forgive me if I got that wrong. Um, But she had messaged me one day and she like gave me your name and she's like, I think you should really look up this guy. You know, she was telling me how you only got one hand, but how incredible of a human being and guitar player you were. So that was the first time you fell on my radar. And I think that was a couple of years ago now, something like that. Oh, years ago. Well, I think it was like, (laughs) no, I feel like it was like, we were doing the podcast at the time. We've been doing this for about three years now, and we were probably a year in. So yeah, it must have been like two years ago, I think was when, when I got my first introduction to who you were. But, and then we ended up running into each other. I think yeah. it was at the Capitol the first time we saw Pretty each other sure in person. It was at the Capitol. Yeah, yeah. Uh, entirely at the certain. open stage, right? Yeah. Freaking rights. I love the open stage there, man. There's so many good people oh. there and musicians. It's freaking unbelievable. 
Longest running one in Saskatoon, baby. Why are you looking at me like that? Long live Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, hashtag long live Tuesdays. Um, or call in sick Wednesdays, but whatever. So we were, we were actually talking. I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for questions because we were having a conversation prior to the show, and I typically don't mm. do that because I try and questions. save everything. So <laughs> just, just forgive again. me if I'm repeating. <laughs> but we were talking about the Saskatoon's Got Talent. Mm. That's actually the day. What, what is the date today? We're the 13th today, yes. right? Yeah. Yep. So we're recording this on the 13th, which was last week, but the Saskatoon Got Talent would have been last Saturday, the one that just went by. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? And Dylan came in first. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Dylan crushed it. Um, but, but, but we were talking about it before, and you were explaining how you registered for that, and you're going to be performing at that. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just kind of went on that, went for it on a whim. I saw off of your story on Instagram, which is how I got kind of introduced oh, it yeah that's that's how hey i found yo. it and so i love instagram so I, too <laughs> <laughs> so i went through it and i was like okay i might as well sign up sent uh some of the videos from the last performance uh the house band did at the capital music club which is burn it to the ground nickelback and i sent that in and they, yeah they took it in i was like oh shit now i gotta now i gotta see if i can fit a band there but they're saying we only have like a five minute setup times and the, like, they don't have drum kits or bass amps or nothing other it's like okay I'm going to do this acoustic and I am going to panic. <laughs> I am going to be scared. I'm so excited but also nervous at the same time. I mean, that's how I am for every single show. Like, right. Like, I'm, I'm always nervous. Even every Tuesday. Like, I, I look forward to every Tuesday when uh, we were still doing the house band. Yeah. Who knows in the future we might still be. It might. Um, yeah. It was, it was so fun and like, it, always excited for every single Tuesday. Monday, I would wake up like, shit, it's not Tuesday. <laughs> I am so ready for this. And then Tuesday comes like, I can't remember any of my lyrics. I for real? can't remember my guitar parts. I am freaking out. <laughs> like, oh shit, man! And uh, I always and like that's that's a, that's the thing. Is like I'm constantly practicing. Like when I'm at home, I'll pick up my acoustic and I'll I'll write some songs. You know, I've got probably ten completely written songs. Nine of them I can't remember. One of them I can. <laughs> <laughs> the the other nine are sitting in the file on my computer. And I've been kind of going at them and trying to see what I can do. And I've been constantly writing new music and seeing what I can do. And I have another one that I think might actually hold hold some hold some weight to it. So right. So I'm, and I'm that, pretty so that'll be the one that you're gonna be doing at the Saskatoon's Got Talent. Um, no, actually, I'm gonna be doing a cover for that one. Okay. Yeah. The All Nickelback right. one. Uh, no, acoustic. Oh. oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine me doing a hard rock song in yeah, the acoustic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, that's why I was like, that, that could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how this one goes. <laughs> no doubt. So did they give you like a like a time that you're going to be performing or like what is I, – I don't know anything about it. All, I, to truth be told, I just saw that Sask Music had shared it mm -hmm. and it was a, a different entity that's like organizing yeah. it. Um, and I just shared that because like I know a lot of people that follow me are all musicians mm -hmm. on Instagram. So I figured if I put that out there, at least they'll – They'll be aware of it, so yeah, I know. I don't know. Up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know anything about it other than there's this thing called Saskatoon's Got Talent that's happening this Saturday. Um, based on timing, I don't. Um, they haven't given me a set time yet, or what time to show up. They've only told me to show up at about, um, I think it was two thirty or three thirty around that time, okay. and to to be ready. Um, they might have set times. They might email me it tomorrow or right. the day of, which would be, I hope not. I hope it's not the day of. Yeah, yeah. I would be freaking out. Um, Come but at two thirty and play at seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I do that all the time. So, <laughs> right. well, speaking no, of, you do a lot of last minute gigs too. Uh, okay, you can't. <laughs> Why? Where, where are you going with that one? I don't get it. No, he do, he does a lot of last minute gigs yeah. where he gets a text and he's like, "Okay, I'm off. I'm playing yeah. a gig." So what? Mar so what? Mark's referring to you guys is uh, a couple Tuesdays ago. It was actually the last time, it was like the finale of, our, of, our, of the house band that we had at the open stages. We were saying farewell to them because we were going to try and do some featured acts for not, the... Not farewell. Uh, well, that's what it's we said. Take like, the summer off and we'll see what happens yeah, after. Yeah, it was yeah. one of those kind of <laughs> things. But the, the night that we were saying goodbye to the house band, Dylan gets a text and like pretty much, I think it was like 9 o'clock at night. He's like, oh shit, yeah. I got to go, you guys. I, I got a gig in PA right now. Somebody's missing and I got to pack up and go. Is that okay? And we were like, yeah, hell yeah. Do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Then we come to find out tonight that he made it all the way up to Rostern and the gig got canceled. So he had to turn <laughs> around and drive all the way back to Saskatoon. 
which is probably <laughs> kind of <laughs> typical for you, I'm presuming, for on no. like how many games? <laughs> not at all? No? no, that really pissed me off. <laughs> 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 you have no idea how mad I was driving back home. Like, oh, I, I wasted like a quarter of my gas tank. I was like, son of a... No like, I was, I was sitting there. And I went through three smokes just out of anger and stress. Frick, no <laughs> doubt, dude. And then the drive back to Saskatoon oh. to just sit in that anger. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, Frick, oh, I man, get it. it. Was, it was awful. Right on. So to get back to your writing, because I think I've only heard you play covers, mm-hmm. I believe. You, you see me play one original. Okay. <laughs> yes. Was I paying attention? Uh, well, I would Probably hope not. so. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> so... Uh, how are you working on an album, on an EP, or is that Yeah, something? what's the plan with yeah. these 10 songs that you've got on file there I at home? No and the clue. nine that you don't remember. <laughs> the, okay, the nine that I don't remember is the one original that I'm going to play later on. Okay. That one okay. I'm going to play. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that one that I had written down. That was like, Okay, that song um, is called uh, Feel Lost, and it's about... Um, so I know that I wrote the song... While I, I was I drunk now. as shit at 4, 6 a.m. Around that time, I know it was around that time because on my phone, I looked through uh, some of my older videos, woke up the next morning, looked at my phone, saw this video, and I was so out of it, but I had like a good chord progression, a good little <laughs> thing going. It sounded good, but my vocals were so <laughs> off. I'm so glad I wrote down the lyrics, but I could barely read them because I was so out of it. I finished a 60 of Jack Daniels to myself. It oh was my bad. God. And oh like that, God. Was, that was recently after I, I left my uh, my... My son's mother. And that song um, was about how I was struggling a lot, and it was a lot of my story, and it's about how I was feeling lost, how I was feeling um, down under, and I was dealing with a lot of depression, suicidal thoughts at that point. And I wrote that song, and I kind of, I guess, redid it a bit, reworked the lyrics when I was actually sober and hungover, and Mm -hmm. I worked through it, and I kind of made it to something that I think sounds pretty good, and I'm pretty proud of what I made that day. Hell and yeah. it's really good. And is that the one you did at the Capitol? Yeah, that's the one I've done at the Capitol. Okay, I remember that one. Yeah, I it, guess. It, it was good. I do remember <laughs> that one. So, do you, so the, the number of songs that you have on file at home, how long have you had those for? Like, what I'm getting at is, like, what's stopping you from recording those? Um, money. <laughs> is that what it is? Basically, that's why I picked up a third job. Is for one, I am in crippling debt. Oh, okay, <laughs> I owe a lot of money. Um, that's because I have a because um, you're gas. a musician. I have gas <laughs> syndrome, which is gear acquisition syndrome, which means I can't <laughs> stop buying gear, and it's awful. <laughs> right? No, I'm kidding. I've, I've I've stopped buying gear. My last one was at Explorer. That's the last one. That was in January. Okay, <laughs> you can judge me. You can judge me. Okay. I think he's lying, you guys. That's, that's what I think. I'm not lying, okay? <laughs> but um, when it comes to recording music, uh, my, 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 my parents, God bless them, I love them so much. They've, they've actually helped. Um, this is going to sound like Donald Trump. They invested a million dollars into the, No. Yeah. Um, they, they, they helped me uh, build my little home studio in my apartment, and I've got a little keyboard in there. They helped um, upgrade my audio interface they bought me the cabinet that i've been using at the capitol okay um, that, that giant one the, the, the huge one that <laughs> like you guys are like why do you do that like this is this is a tiny ass bar like why why would you do that to yourself yeah, <laughs> yeah. but i do it just because i want to struggle <laughs> yeah. um but they, they, they bought me a bunch of microphones and i've been kind of recording a few songs um the one original I'm going to sing tonight, I did record that one, but I'm wondering if I should add a bit more of a band aspect to it or keep it solely acoustic. Right. I'm kind of wondering on that one. Why yeah. not do both? Maybe. You could. Do, Pol- do an acoustic version of it and then yeah. bring in, call in a band to do another version of it, maybe? Or just rent a drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> rent and do it myself. Yeah. yeah. Rent an electric <laughs> just kit. Just do it. Yeah, there you go. That'll cost me 20 bucks. Freaking right. And six um, hours. For those of you watching at home, um, we will have Dylan be performing three songs in this episode. Um, We have not recorded those yet. We're going to be doing that after this conversation, and we'll sprinkle them in this episode um, throughout. This is uh, Sex on Fire, King to Leon.
watching. They're watching. All the commotion. Kitty like play. Yeah, people talking. They're talking. Good job, Mark. You made him forget. <laughs> okay, outside <laughs> of um, Saskatoon's Got Talent, um, do you like what kind of shows, gigs do you got lined up? You've been pretty busy and active in the music scene there. I, every time I'm looking at your posts there, you've got gigs in Prince Albert, stuff going on in Saskatoon, mm -hmm. rural Saskatchewan. You're hitting up all the towns and everything. Um, what can what can we look forward to? in the next like month or so that brings me to another question there you go Continue. Um, remarkably i haven't played many shows in saskatoon i think this would be my third show in saskatoon this weekend outside of the capital right i think it'd be my third like kind of official show um but i have been back and forth with prince albert uh to some other reservations north of prince albert um surprisingly nothing from my hometown which has been a bit disappointing ah. but you know what it doesn't bother me at all because right. if you're listening, Wallison. Yeah, if you're listening. <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I do have a show coming up in um, Prince Albert, which is the Prince Albert Exhibition. I'll be playing the exhibition oh, hell yeah. on August 2nd. And that's, I'm not sure of the time. I'm pretty sure it's like 5. I'm almost certain it's 5 to 7 p.m. We'll be doing uh, two 45-minute sets. You're going to um, feel super confused during the show. You're going to go from uh, country to my user rock stuff, my <laughs> res rock. And you go to like really hard rock stuff, back to the country, and then end it off with hard rock. And you're going to leave feeling confused and 
really entertained. <laughs> entertained. And, and wondering entertained. who the hell was this guy. <laughs> 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 exactly. Exactly. You know, you got to have that variety. Got to yeah, pull yeah. a nickel back and go from country to, to metal. To metal. <laughs> yeah. um, is it is it going to be like a, a solo show, or are you going to have a full band there with you at the exhibition grounds? Uh, I'm going to have I, I guess full band because it's going to be okay. me. Um, my buddy Jordan, who you guys know, Jordan, okay. and uh, Stephen is going to be joining me for that show. Stephen oh, right Williams. On. Oh, so man, that's right going to be phenomenal. That's a half-decent band. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they actually might not be that they bad. They might actually be somewhat be, good. Be pretty yeah. good. No, well, I'm going to I'm gonna do my darndest to make themselves. it out there, man. <laughs> I, I kind of miss seeing you at the Capitol there, so I'm trying to figure out where I can see you perform next outside of what we're going to do here tonight. So that question that I had, you went to... Winnipeg. Yes. Oh, not that yeah. long ago. Yeah. Tell us about that. How how was that? What was that? And how did you get involved in that? And how awesome it was. Oh, okay. That's gonna be a whole segment. Um Yes, let's it was go. We insane. Have time, man. Um <laughs> so I started working with uh, the Rob Nash project if, if for those listening or watching don't know what the Rob Nash project is. The Rob Nash project is about Rob Nash who um when he was younger he got into a car crash and he died on the scene and um, they obviously he's brought back to life, um, and he is now a performing musician. And he started playing all these shows and all that. He ripped up his record deal uh, to go world f- to go for a world tour. He ripped that up. He ripped up his contract, and then he because he was uh, going to schools and charging them nothing to play these huge concerts for them, like these concert level shows that they would spend like close to a hundred thousand dollars on just to put together these shows and. They would do it all for free. They would get, get like sponsors to sponsor it all to get it all put together and they would do it back and forth. And I got into contact with them because years ago, I think six years ago, um, I met Rob Nash. He came to my reservation in Wollaston and um, told a story and about suicide. And at that time, I was very suicidal because I was dealing with uh, bullying and um, uh, not being well with my self-image. I was dealing with a lot there because of my disability and I wasn't really happy with myself. And outside of that, when Rob Nash came in, um, it just kind of sparked something in me and so that kind of got me much more into music and music has kind of been my outlet. So after that, um, I reached out to Rob Nash in 2020, I'm pretty certain. Reached out to Rob Nash in 2020 and we got together and we started working together and um, he asked me to join him for some... I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk to about it because it's a part of my NDA. Kay. And so I'm not going to say anything, but there might be something coming out in the future from the Rob Nash Project. And it, um, so, yeah, the show in, in Winnipeg there. Yeah. So can you, can you tell us like, what the event was, how many people were there, what, what was going on in Winnipeg? Um, so they flew me out to Winnipeg um, late May, and it was... For one, it was wild. It was the craziest experience I've ever had to have like somebody be like, hey, we need you to play guitar and sing, come out, your plane's booked, everything's booked, your hotel room's booked, you're fine, we got food for you, come out. And I was more excited about the food because like that food was <laughs> goddamn delicious. <laughs> it was so good, you have no idea. And um, flew out there and I made it in and boy, like just, just landing, I felt like a rock star carrying my guitar case and my uh, suitcase out of there wearing my cowboy hat. You have no idea how, yeah. how well, amazing I felt. <laughs> dude, you are a rock star, man. You oh, are. You. That's why you felt like that. <laughs> and um, a part of the show, because um, these were for schools. So like for a normal concert, the concert would start 7.30, 8.30 p.m., around there. And for the Rob Nash Project, the concert started at 10.30 a.m. So it started really early because these were schools that were coming in. And right. we even, I think we even had one school that drove six or seven hours to come down for the show in Holy moly. To Winnipeg. Oh, wow. And it was insane. And I met some of those kids, and they were all just wonderful. And, and this show was at the Burton Cummings Theater in Winnipeg, and absolutely gorgeous theater. I loved it. And all the people there were so wonderful. They were so nice, and it was great. And it's... It was it was an experience to like it it's been the highlight of my music career just being there and like outside of the performance itself just being there and talking to these kids about mental health and like seeing it actually helps some some youth a part of their in with their message with their mental health and their mental well-being that it actually helped them a little bit and helps them get on their way that's what really made me much more happy in yeah. being there and right. on top of that like 
being there was just incredible. The whole team was amazing, and all these kids were just fantastic, and they were all so respectful. And that was the f- like it was. I don't want to sound pretentious, but like I felt so insane signing autographs. Like you have <laughs> yeah. no idea. Like like one kid even wanted to just touch my stump. Like he <laughs> like I'm gonna put the mic down and like this is this is what he did, you guys. Like this is that's what he did. And he just he just came to me, he asked me uh, for an autograph and a picture and he took a photo, gave him his autograph, and he was like, Can I touch it? And he, he just he just went for it and he he <laughs> it was it was so funny and like i couldn't laugh in the moment because he was so interested and i i was just like kind of sit, sitting there stunned i was like yeah go ahead and i was like okay <laughs> and, and then he walks off he's like thank you so much i was like okay and then me um maya and um ash were just sitting there we, were just, we just started laughing and it was <laughs> it was so insane but like it was so great as well and all the kids were great i remember signing a few hats and from the top balcony because it would chuck it to us from the top balcony and in the process of signing these hats we'd all sign them and then i would chuck it up i know one of the times that i threw it up there i accidentally nailed a hit in the kid in the head right with his in the hat, forehead yes. right in the forehead <laughs> and um and i have a pretty good swinging arm here and, <laughs> and i hit him straight on in the forehead or or in the face i just i just hit him pretty good and i know that because his buddies were like, "Oh shit! Like, are you okay?" And like, he got up. He's like, "Thank you!" And he just ran off with this class. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, I felt so bad, but I couldn't help but laugh at the fact that he didn't care. That I just nailed him in the head with a with just a hat. having a good time. <laughs> um, how big was the was the crowd when you when you got oh. to perform on the stage there? Oh, there was seventeen hundred kids there. Holy, and shit. holy crap! It was it was insane. <laughs> like no that's doubt. that's all I have to say. Seventeen hundred. 1700 you standing in front of you knowing that you're pushing a message across and all that it was it was wild and some of the funny parts of that show was um rob uh when i because i sing the last chorus of that song and when rob would go out while i was singing he would the last chorus of the song he would just walk out into the crowd find an empty seat and just sit next to one random kid just 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 because yeah just just because and like there's a video somewhere uh I think from Asher or Maya, uh, that shows the kid who was recording uh, the band playing, the Rob Nash sitting next to him, didn't notice it was Rob Nash, and then slowly just pans his camera to Rob. And it was, <laughs> it, it's, it's such a funny video, because it, in, out of context, it doesn't sound that funny, but right. it is hilarious. But, it's, but it's knowing just hilarious. what happened yeah. behind the story kind of thing, <laughs> for yeah. sure, man. Have you ever had an opportunity to play in front of a crowd like that before? Um, like that, that size of a crowd? I guess that size of a crowd I have played for before in Wollaston. Okay. I played for the Winter Festival there. I think we had twelve to 1,300 people there in the okay. hall. I could be wrong. I know for New Year's I played that. But, like, it's, it's just the entire, the entire um, vibe of the hall was entirely different than the theater because all those yeah. people there were just there to have fun, get drunk, and pass out and leave. And, like... No, no disrespect to that. You know, that's what party bands are for. And, right. you know, I have my own party band. And, yep. you know, that's fine. But, like, it was such a, a shock to me from going to being a party band and, like, all that, tearing down and just leaving. And then just bringing a single guitar, actually two guitars to the show, then providing everything for me, and then playing the show, tearing down, going to, because like I went out to take a single video of the crowd after the show was done, after we were done performing, go out to take a single video and just everybody starts screaming, like yelling at me, Dylan, all these little kids like, Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, and it was so wild, I didn't know what to do, so I asked Maya, and Maya's been on the road with uh, Rob for I think 10 to 13 years, and I was, I was like, what, what do I do, like I don't, I don't know what to do, and she, she was like, just take it in, <laughs> yeah. like, like, yeah. let's go up to the second balcony, I have a video I think I posted, of me heading up to the second balcony, all these kids just going wild, and it was so insane. Like, it it's just, I don't know. Like, felt like a rock star, but I also felt super humbled and moved in that moment. That like, For sure. this this yeah, was yeah. this like this was an amazing moment. Like, also being able to just sit there and go out to the side, like talk to some kids, sign their autographs, take a photo with them, talk to them, Freaking let them rights, let them know man. they're not alone. Like, it was it was it was fantastic. It was amazing. I loved awesome. it. Oh hell yeah! I love it. <clears throat> Um, do you have any pressing questions? I, I was just about to say, I think it's time for you to play some music. I'm, I'm really, I, I want to hear you rock out, man. I haven't heard you 
play in a couple of weeks here, so I'm kind of itching. A couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since I heard you play. I'm itching for it. And I want the yeah. people at home to be able to see and, and hear it as well. Um, cool. Thank you very much for uh, coming because this is how we end the show and we'll put the music in later. Yeah, we'll sprinkle it thank in. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, yes, thank you. I want you to know, Dylan, um, you're a great man. You're an awesome musician. Yes. Uh, a wow. friend of ours, a friend of the herd, and this platform is here anytime you need it, want it, or you just want to come and shoot the shit with us, man. The door is the door is open. Are you crying? And anytime you need. Burping. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had beer in a minute. <laughs> so with that, we're gonna we you guys stick with us. We're going to uh, get Dylan his guitar and uh, excited to hear you play, buddy. Oh yeah. Love you, man. Let's Thanks, do man. it. Hey, wait, I want to do one of these like that kid. <laughs> <laughs> just fill it up. <laughs> love you, awesome. buddy. Oh, I love you guys, man. This next one is just completely instrumental. It's just going to be me and my guitar and my thoughts. So most of this is going to be improv. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard this one's from Metallica, and I'm going to be kind of improvising over most of this song here. So 